Hello, and welcome to the Psychomatics Collection Training. Whether you know it or not, you play a big part in delivering a great experience for our clients. And we created this video to help you master the simple steps to a perfect collection. So let's get started. This first step is very important for two reasons. You verify the donor's identity. Either a state-issued ID or a company-issued employee badge are two acceptable forms of identification. And you begin filling out the chain of custody form you will submit with the sample. First, you check the box for the type of ID you used for identification. Second, you check the appropriate box for reason for the test. Verifying identity and completing the CCF are critical steps to ensuring the integrity of the test. Now you are ready to move to the second step, the collection. Before removing hair, you must decide which part of the body you will collect from. Whenever possible, head hair is always your first choice. Now, here is an important point. When collecting here, make sure you look for a collection site away from the crown of the head. If you have confirmed that the candidate has enough head hair for the required quantity to be collected, you can proceed. For candidates with thinning or short hair, be sure to collect from multiple areas of the head to avoid leaving a bald spot or cosmetic detection. Before you begin the collection, be sure to sanitize the hair clip and scissors with the alcohol wipe provided with each sample kit. Use a hair clip to secure any excess hair out of the way. Then, using your thumb and index finger, extend the appropriate quantity of hair to be collected out away from the scalp. Using scissors, you snip your sample just above the scalp line. Never use a razor or electric cutters to collect a sample from the head. Always use scissors. Our lab requires a sample of 50 milligrams of hair to run their tests. Here's a simple way to verify that you have collected enough hair. Gather together the specimen and hold it between your thumb and forefinger. The total should be a minimum one half inch long. That is about the length that a dime is wide and when gathered should be the size of a number two pencil lead. Then secure the sample in the foil with the root end of the sample toward the slanted end of the foil with about one fourth inch of the hair extending beyond the end of the foil. For people with long hair, you will still snip your sample at the scalp line and send the entire length of hair. Do not shorten it. You will just wrap the excess around the outside of the foil after you have sealed it. And remember, be sure to mark head hair as the source of collection on the CCF. In some cases, the candidate may not have enough head hair for the quantity required, and you will have to collect from multiple body hair sources. That is just fine. Here are some places for collection. Arms, legs, chest, underarm, and below the jawline. For body hair, use the collection scissors if possible. If the hair is not long enough to cut with scissors, then a single-use disposable razor is your option. The quantity requirements for body hair remain the same. You must collect 50 milligrams of hair for us to process the sample. Here is a word of caution. If you do not collect the required amount, it means the donor may have to come back for a second collection and likely won't be happy. So, if you collect from a body site rather than the head, make sure your quantity looks like this. After the body hair sample has been collected, you will place the hair in the center of the sample foil. For body hair, the specimen does not have to be aligned at the root end. Pinch the foil closed around the body hair, as this makes it easier for our lab technicians to process. And remember, you never mix head and body hair samples in the same piece of foil. The sample submitted to the lab should be from one location or the other. And we should mention here that pubic hair is not an acceptable sample. Your next step is to place the tin foil inside the sample acquisition card, SAC. To close the sack, remove the adhesive backing from the top flap and close it similar to closing a standard envelope. At this time, you will need to remove the barcode label and apply this to the gray shaded area of the sample acquisition card. Once that's done, you will need to place the tamper-evident seal onto the sack. 
Don't forget, in this step, it is important to make sure that the donor has initialed the sack and has completed step three on the chain of custody form. As the collector, you will complete step four to verify the location the collection has taken place. Now is a good time to review. You have confirmed the donor's identity, collected the sample, placed it in the tin foil and the tin foil in the sack, sealed the sack and placed the tamper evident seal and barcode on the sack, had the donor initial the sack, Confirm there are no errors on the chain of custody form. When you are happy that everything is correct, remove the first page of the chain of custody form and place it and the sealed sample acquisition card in the bag. Don't forget, now is the time to give the donor a copy of the form. This is important, so make sure they have it. Remove the plastic backing from the seal and seal the bag shut. It's time to ship. To get your collected sample ready for shipment, place the lab bag inside of the FedEx envelope and place the pre-printed FedEx label provided by Psychomedics on the envelope for shipping. The sample is now ready to be shipped. And here's a hint. If you are collecting samples from multiple donors, you can combine those shipping bags in one FedEx envelope, up to 15 of them. Now that you have learned the simple steps to a perfect collection, it's time for you to complete your certification exam. You will find it at the address on your screen. Welcome to the Psychomedics family.